We're now in the IoT tent, and first we're going to learn all about OpenThread from Jonathan. All right, so OpenThread is an open source implementation of the thread, thread networking protocol. Uh, what it is, is a low power mesh networking technology that allows devices, IoT devices, to talk to each other uh, over a low power mesh network. So if you're building products that uh, run on battery that's supposed to last for years, not months, uh, Thread's a great solution for that. So what we've done at Nest is taken the protocol and made an open source implementation, uh, put in our products, and made it available to developers to build into their own ones. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, you want me to walk you through the demo here? Yeah, and show me what's going on. So all these devices you see on the wall are actually running open Thread. They're running our partner hardware, and uh, they're connected to a single Thread network, one giant mesh network. And uh, one of the benefits of Thread is actually using IP, so just internet protocol. And each device has an IP address, an IPv6 address to be specific. So, and that makes it really easy for developers to build apps because it's just IP that they're used to. So if you can ping a web server, you can ping a, th a Thread node. So in this demo, we're actually showing pinging a device over the Thread network. So as you see that light blink, uh, it's actually going over Wi-Fi from this tablet to this Raspberry Pi, which happens to be on Wi-Fi, and then fanning out to the Thread network. And you can imagine sensors or actuators like door locks and windows um, being replaced by a LED, but we're just simplifying it with this de demonstration. It's really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Good thing. Hey, uh, before we go, actually, uh, if developers want to get started, where do they go? Sure. Uh, it's been publicly available for the last year. We launched it at Google I.O. last year. Uh, and you can go on github.com slash openthread slash openthread. Uh, there's code labs available if you're here at Google I.O., but it's also available on the Google Code Lab website for you to try out on, at home. I see a golden retriever. It's a golden retriever. That's pretty great. So we're in the Android Things room, and I'm here with Ryan and Wayne. Ryan, tell us about some of the stuff that uh, is built on Android Things in this room. Cool. Uh, do you want me to hold it? Sure. All right. Um, uh, so over here, we have um, a simple demo that, wants to, that we are using to show how easy it is to uh, go from prototype to production with Android things. So at the top, we have a very simple light that's turned on using a Intel Edison kit. Over here, uh, we're using the design, but we used a custom PCB to um, make the footprint smaller. Uh, therefore, you can fit the overall thing into smaller form factor. At the bottom, you can see in the candle. Actually, the really cool part about that demo is that any developer can make a circuit board like that. So in our talk tomorrow, we're going to show how to actually build that circuit board. And you can actually solder this up in your own workshop or home. So it's actually one of the really cool things about the SOM architecture is you can do that. Yep. Uh, on the right, we have the TensorFlow camera demo. This is also running on Android Things. We have Raspberry Pi 3 camera. Um, and it's actually fairly easy to build as well. All these parts are off the shelf. Um, so you'll notice battery that too. it's running on battery, completely portable. Uh, and the best part is uh, it's actually running offline, completely locally on the device. Uh, so we're running the TensorFlow model, uh, TensorFlow Inception model you can get uh, online. And then once we download it, install it as an APK here. Uh, now you don't need online at all, so you don't need data cost associated with it at all. So when I press this button, it will take a picture using the camera module located here, uh, and then it'll be processed on the device, and it'll say what it thinks it is using Android text-to-speech. Tell me about the M&Ms over here. So on this one, this was actually built by one of our external developers in our community, uh, Louis. So the Smile Candy Dispenser, uh, it's powered by Android Things using Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, once you press this button, the camera will take a picture of you, send it, send that image uh, through Cloud Vision API. And if it detects a smile, it'll give you the candy. And we're using a relay module, as you can see here, connected to the motor of the dispenser to activate the dispensing. All right, y'all. Well, I think that's all the Android things that we're going to check out in this booth. Uh, Wayne, before we get going, what are some things that developers can do today to play with Android things? Well, the really cool thing is all these samples here, we've open sourced all of them. So the TensorFlow image recognition, the LED candle, we've released all the source code on GitHub. The schematics for the candle are also available as an actual circuit design, so you can actually make them yourself. Um, so you can try all these things out, and then it's really easy to get started. You use Android Studio to write your code, and it's 
really easy to get going. So any Android program who's written a phone app now has the ability to make IoT apps as well. So that's one of the really cool things about Android Things is it takes advantage of all of your existing Android knowledge and allows you to apply it here. All right, we're now in the Works with Nest room, and I'm here with Jesse, who's going to tell us a little bit about uh, Works with Nest. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. So Works with Nest is a developer program for Nest, and we have a bunch of different APIs that let you connect into the Nest ecosystem. And there's a lot of ways that you can connect. You can connect to the thermostat, the camera, the smoke alarm, um, and then also our uh, demand response programs that we set up with uh, utility companies cross country. That's awesome. So what are your some of your favorite integrations with the Works with Nest program? So some of the really cool ones are uh, oh, over here, the AWARE. It's an uh, air quality sensor, and uh, it'll measure the different things in your air, and then how it integrates with Nest is it uh, connects to the thermostat and uses the fan to clean up the air in your house when it detects that levels are high. That's cool. What else? Uh, another one that's really cool, which is a little different, it's not directly connecting with the, they're all over. <laughs> uh, products is uh, the Raccio Sprinkler. Okay. So I have that in my house, it manages the water automatically, so I don't have to worry about it in my yard. But uh, with Nest, it, uh, it shows up in my home report every month, where Nest tells me how much energy I'm using with my thermostat, but then I also have a uh, list of how much water I've used and compares it to the previous month. Pretty cool. Cool. So that's some of the stuff that's been around for a little bit. What's next? What's like the newest integrations? So some of our new things are with the camera. Okay. So the camera is now connected to the thermostat or to the, <laughs> the, the APIs, and uh, we're doing cool new things there. So originally you could uh, use the APIs and get motion events and then have your products respond to motion in the house. But uh, lately we've been developing our, uh, our image vision, and uh, now we can recognize people. So now Works with Nest products can get these people events and do things when they know that there's a person. Uh, one example is uh, not necessarily with people, but uh, cool integrations with the camera is Chamberlain and garage doors. So what they do is when the garage door opens, they grab a snapshot from the thermostat and they integrate, integrate that in their history UI in their app. That's awesome. Totally. Okay, so one last question, because we also checked out OpenThread. Is there anything in here that's using Thread? Absolutely. So super excited about Thread. Uh, it's really like the next phase of our development program. So the first one is giving people an easy way to connect to Nest products. And then phase two, we're going to take some of the core technology that we've developed at Nest to build our Nest products and make it available for developers. So we're working with Yale on this lock. Yale's been making locks for 50 years, 100 years, and uh, they're really good at it, but uh, not really a software company. So we've taken some of the software that uh, we use on our Nest products, like Thread, and uh, made it available to them. And it's going to be a really cool lock that's integrated with the ecosystem. And We've actually open sourced Thread, and we have a booth just a couple of booths down where you can see all about it and figure out where to get the code. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to tell to all the developers out there? Check out the code labs. We have an open Thread code lab. We have one with uh, the camera that integrates with TensorFlow. It's uh, fun stuff that you can do uh, for the next two days. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you.